Our universe is full of stars. At the end of their lives, some die quietly. Others go out in spectacular explosions. And some give birth to black holes. If you have a star, a supermassive star, that's a hundred times the mass of the sun, at the end of its life, the core runs out of fuel. There's nothing left to hold it up, and the core collapses down into a black hole. When that happens, the enormous gravity generated at the heart of supermassive stars runs wild. This is the dying star, VY Canis Majoris. It's more than a billion miles across. Like all stars, it's a giant nuclear fusion reactor pumping energy outward. At the same time, the star's extreme gravity crushes inward. For a few million years, fusion and gravity are locked in standoff. But when the star runs out of fuel, Fusion stops, and the stalemate ends. Gravity wins. In a millisecond, the core shrinks to a fraction of its original size, and a baby black hole is born. Immediately, it starts to cannibalize what's left of the star. As matter swirls into the black hole, it gets incredibly hot. And there are magnetic forces and frictional forces, and it's just a witch's brew, a nightmare, what's going on right above the surface of the black hole. The new black hole in the middle keeps feeding on the body of the star around it. It eats the gas so fast, it chokes and coughs, blasting out huge beams of energy. They basically eat their way out from the star. This happens in milliseconds. It happens before the rest of the star even knows the core is gone. And so basically, the star is dead before it hits the ground. Finally, the star explodes. In one second, it blasts out a hundred times more energy than our sun will produce over its entire life. What's left is a new black hole and two jets of energy hurtling through the universe at the speed of light. These jets are called gamma ray bursts. They're incredibly energetic events. In terms of raw energy and power, gamma ray bursts are second only to the Big Bang itself. Most of them last only a few seconds, and they fry anything in their way. They're so intense that if there was a gamma ray burster in the region of our galaxy near our solar system, it could literally vaporize the entire planet. Fortunately, most gamma ray bursts occur outside our galaxy. But they tell us something important about black holes and how our universe works. What we were seeing every time a gamma ray burst went off was basically the birth cry of a black hole. By counting gamma ray bursts, astronomers can figure out how many black holes are being created. In 2004, NASA launched the SWIFT probe to scan the universe for gamma ray bursts. Five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff of NASA SWIFT spacecraft on a mission to study and understand gamma ray bursts throughout the universe. This is the most powerful gamma ray burst SWIFT has detected so far. The flash of light announces the birth of a new black hole on the other side of the universe. SWIFT can only look at a fraction of what's out there.
Still, it detects at least one gamma ray burst every day. That discovery rocked astronomy to its foundations. We once thought that black holes like unicorns could never be found. We now believe that there are perhaps billions of black holes in the night sky. When we look around our galaxy and other galaxies, it's clear that the universe is full of powerful black holes. Finding black holes is one thing. Figuring out how they work, that's a whole different ballgame. The only way to find out is to visit one. You'd have to take a spacecraft across the vastness of space just to get close to it. Then you'd have to go inside the black hole. There you'd find a place where reality breaks down and time stands still. There are billions of black holes in the universe. We can detect them with telescopes and satellites, but we don't actually know what they're like up close. It's a long way off, but scientists are already speculating about a mission to a black hole. A one-way trip to the most dangerous place in the universe. Originally, physicists were horrified at the idea of black holes. They wanted to banish them because the laws of physics as we know them seem to break down at the instant of a black hole. Time stops. Gravity becomes infinite. This is a nightmare. Obviously, we can't send humans anywhere near a black hole. But a robot? Well, sure. A robotic probe could transmit data back just before it goes over the edge. That edge of a black hole is called the event horizon. It's the edge of time and space, at least in the universe we know. We call the event horizon event horizon quite simply because it separates space into two regions. It's not a physical surface. You might not even notice it if you were falling through it. But ultimately, once you're inside of it, you're doomed. As you approach the event horizon, gravity gets stronger, and very strange things start to happen. As you fall into a black hole feet first, your feet are closer to the black hole, and so the gravity they feel is stronger. Your head is not quite as close, and so the gravity it feels is less. And basically what happens is you get stretched out. Your feet are being pulled much harder than your head, and you're like a piece of taffy being pulled between two strong people. As you get thinner and thinner and thinner, as you get closer and closer and closer, you're undergoing a process we call spaghettification, because you're basically turned into a long, thin tube of pasta. Gravity would stretch our robotic probe to the limit, then rip it apart. But imagine if the probe was strong enough to survive and keep going. As it gets close to the event horizon, everything goes crazy. Gravity is so extreme, it stops time. We think of time as being endless. However, in a black hole, in some sense, time stops. This sounds like it's nuts, but that's the way it works. It's in the math. It's actually woven into the fabric of the universe itself. If you were to watch from a distance, the robot probe would seem to slow down as it gets closer to the black hole. Then it would appear to stop completely. The whole process might just take a, a brief moment, but from the outside, you appear to freeze and fall ever more slowly you actually can never observe an object fall all the way through the event horizon. It literally freezes at the surface because its clock is going infinitely slowly compared to yours. In reality, the probe hasn't stopped at all. It keeps going and crosses the event horizon. 
If the probe points its cameras backwards towards the entrance of the black hole, it'll see light being sucked in. If it points the camera forward, at first it sees only black. But as it moves toward the heart of the black hole, it encounters the most bizarre place in the universe. The black hole's immense gravity pulls everything down to an unimaginably small point at its center. Scientists call it the singularity. We really just don't know what happens at the center of a black hole. The densities are so great that the laws of physics break down as we know them. A singularity is a point of infinite gravity where space and time become meaningless. Now that is ridiculous. A singularity is basically a word for saying, I don't know. It's a word for saying, I'm clueless. Even now, scientists can't really answer the question, what is a black hole? It's upsetting a little bit to think that there are objects out there that are breaking the laws of physics. There must be bigger laws that are being used by these black holes, that are being obeyed by these black holes that we just don't understand yet. Okay, so the one thing we do understand is that black holes are born from dying stars. And most are small, around 20 miles across. But now, scientists have discovered that some black holes are much bigger. They're called supermassive black holes. They're the same size as our entire solar system. And one of these monsters lies at the heart of our own galaxy.